Welcome to this informational presentation regarding the Emory DPT short-term evaluation form. The purpose of this presentation is twofold. First, we want to give you background on our program that will assist you in providing your PT student with a fulfilling internship experience. And secondly, the information and tools for how to effectively evaluate and assess their performance with our online evaluation form. This presentation will take you through an introduction to the form and its purpose, the objectives of the short-term clinical experience, and the details of how and when to complete the evaluation and of the evaluation conference afterwards. First, for an introduction as to why we are committed to using this form. We are often asked the question, why does Emory use this particular form? It's so different from the forms used by other programs. The simple answer is that this specific form assures that our students are evaluated on the core competencies that we value and teach. Unlike many other DPT programs, our program is competency-based. And we have identified six competencies that each of our students must master. Provision of patient care, interpersonal communication, teaching learning process, administration, research, and consultation. All six competencies are taught and integrated throughout the curriculum by using a problem-solving approach and process. For example, our faculty model problem-solving, interpersonal communication, and teaching learning processes during formal and informal interactions. Similarly, Students are expected to demonstrate competency using the problem-solving process during provision of patient care, interpersonal communications, teaching learning process, and administration in both the classroom and clinical setting. We feel that this evaluation form effectively evaluates our students' problem-solving and competency within four of our six competency areas, provision of patient care, interpersonal communication, teaching learning process, and administration. Additionally, we feel that this evaluation form effectively addresses the objectives and mission of our DPT program and of the internship experience. Objectives. What are our objectives for the general medicine internship experience? We have five objectives. Given patients with straightforward general medical problems and limited comorbidities, the student will first use the problem solving process to assess patients and establish a plan of care as in accordance with Emory's provision of patient care criteria. Secondly, provide therapeutic services in accordance with Emory's provision of patient care criteria. Third, Use interpersonal communication and teaching learning process during interactions with patients and professionals as in accordance with Emory's interpersonal communications and teaching learning criteria. Fourth, demonstrate professional behavior as in accordance with Emory's administration criteria. And lastly, identify the administrative structure and goals of the physical therapy department as described in our administration criteria. So now that you know the objectives for the student's experience, let's talk a moment about how you can assist them in achieving these objectives through the use of intentional and constructive feedback. It is expected that clinical instructors will provide both daily and periodic feedback during their student's two-week experience. Daily feedback should address the student's work with specific patients, present suggestions, and frequently assess and or set educational goals. Periodic feedback should happen at the end of the first week and should consist of a more thorough review of the student's overall performance. The CI should use the online evaluation form, this form, as a guide for what to address during this process.
The following section will discuss the information contained within the online evaluation form and will guide you through the process of how and when you should start and complete the evaluation. First, who completes the evaluation form? The form is completed independently online by both the clinical instructor and the student. If a second clinical instructor has been working with the student, the second clinical instructor reviews and completes the form in collaboration with the primary clinical instructor. Secondly, when should you and your student complete the form? Evaluations are completed once during the two-week internship. The evaluation is completed on the last day of the second week, and it should assess how the student performed during the second week only. To reiterate, the evaluation should assess the student's performance based on his or her performance during only the immediately preceding one week. Third, how do you actually fill out the form and what type of information can you find within the form's contents? The form is comprised of four of our competencies, provision of patient care, interpersonal communication, teaching learning process, and administration. Each competency section is comprised of component behaviors, which are defined by specific criteria. Where to find the criteria definitions will be discussed on slide 14, and these are important as you will assess your student based on whether or not he or she performs the component behaviors to these criteria. Let us go to the next slide for specific examples of the competencies and behaviors. This slide is a screenshot of one of the pages on our evaluation form. At the top left, you will see the competency title, in this case, Provision of Patient Care. On the bottom left, you will notice in blue highlighted text the component behaviors that comprise this competency. To find the specific criteria that, that define these behaviors, let us go to the next slide. On this slide, you see on the top left a copy of the slide before with the provision of patient care competency and its component behaviors. When you click on the blue highlighted text of the behaviors, a pop-up window appears with definitions of criteria for those individual behaviors. This is the information or the criteria that you will need in order to assess the student's performance on the individual behavior. Now there are two exceptions for where to find criteria. On items number seven, which is titled examination procedures, and item number 13, which deals with therapeutic invention, interventions, you will notice that when you click on the blue text, a pop-up opens that directs you to the Emory Physical Therapy Entry-Level Competencies and Criteria Manual, which is available in hard copy at your facility. So now that you've accessed the form and have found the location of the criteria for the objectives, how do you actually go about scoring the student? You will assess the student's performance of how well he or she performed each component behavior to criteria on a four-point scale. We will discuss this four-point scale on the following slide. However, there is also the option of scoring the student a not applicable or NA on a behavior you would want to score an NA in any of the following situations. You have not observed the student on a behavior. Secondly, the student has not had the opportunity to perform the behavior. Or, you feel that the number of times you have observed the behavior yields insufficient data to rate the student. So for example, if you've only observed a specific behavior two or three times, you may feel uncomfortable scoring the student's performance on that behavior. 
In this case, an NA would be the appropriate score. If an NA does not apply to a specific behavior, use the following four-point scale. Four, demonstrates competency. Student performs all criteria for the behavior 80 to 100% of the time. Three, developing competency. The student performs all criteria for the behavior on 50 to 79% of the time. Two, beginning competency. The student performs all criteria for the behavior 26 to 49% of the time. And one, rarely competent. The student performs all criteria for the behavior 0 to 25% of the time. This is a screenshot of one of our forms pages. At the top of the page in the red circle is the rating scale with its definitions. To the bottom left are the component behaviors and the, air, and the arrow is showing you the column and drop down boxes in which you score the behavior. On this particular example, the CI rated the student a three on the behavior, identify symptoms and coexisting conditions of the client, meaning that the student performs this behavior to criteria on 50 to 79% of occasions. Now we're going to talk a bit about two items that are exceptions to the typical scoring procedures items number 16 and item number 40, which address patient safety and professional behavior. On the evaluation form, you will notice that these items are scored first due to their importance in clinical care. We expect that the student will earn a four, demonstrates competency for both of these items. If the student is not earning a four or is earning a four but demonstrates red flags, such as he or she scores closer to 80% of occurrences versus 100, please contact our directors of clinical education immediately. Dr. Patricia Bridges and Dr. Tammy Phillips' contact information is located below. The following two slides are screenshots of item 16, which is patient safety, and 40, which is professional behavior, along with the reminder that the student should score a four on these items. Again, we expect that the student will earn a four, demonstrates competency for both of these items and will be at 100%. Now, as you've gone through this evaluation form, you may have noticed that many of the forms pages have a place for comments. Use these comment boxes to provide constructive feedback for behaviors that require additional practice, positive feedback, and examples. And lastly, information regarding items or behaviors that were scored in NA. The next couple of slides address a few general tips and resources for when you start the evaluation form. One. You may start and stop completion of the form at any time, as it will automatically save your work, unless you hit submit. Please do not hit the submit button until after the evaluation conference with the student, which will be addressed in slides 25 through 28. You may re-enter the form at any time to edit, add, or delete information. Before hitting submit, please hold the evaluation conference with your student. And lastly, if your facility requires a hard copy of the evaluation, you will need to print each page individually by hitting either the Control-P keys or by selecting Print from the file menu. And once again, please do not hit the Submit button until after you've held the evaluation conference with your student. For resources and to access all of the information that you may need to review prior to completing the evaluation, please remember this slide. It's slide number 24. If you would like to review an entire competency 
you may click below on any of these links. To find the criteria for the objectives and behaviors within a competency, you may click on the blue highlighted text to retrieve a pop-up window with the criteria listed. Please review slide number 14 if needed. To find the criteria for specific examination or intervention procedures, please use your Emory Physical Therapy Entry Level Competencies and Criteria Manual located at your facility. Please review slide 15 if needed. So I am going to click on this link, Teaching Learning Process. It's going to pull up a new window in my browser. So here it is, Competency in the Teaching Learning Process. And here are all of the behaviors within this teaching learning competency. Okay, so I'm going to exit back out of here and go back to the presentation. This last section highlights the evaluation conference and all that should take place during and after this review with your student. After the CI and student independently complete the evaluation, they should meet to review their forms. Differences and responses are discussed and examples are given to substantiate the chosen response. If agreement is reached, the response is changed to the agreed upon choice. If disagreement remains, the responses on each form should remain. However, indicate the difference within the comment section. Upon completion of the review, the CI and student should electronically sign the form. The CI must indicate his or her specialty and if they are an APTA credentialed CI. Press submit only after completion of the above steps. After the conference and submission of the evaluation form, discuss with your student the APTA Physical Therapy Student Evaluation Clinical Experience and Clinical Instruction Form, which is an online evaluation form the student has completed on his or her experience at your facility. A few facts about this, for this form are as follows. The student will fill out the form online, inclusive of the CI's information, and will print the form for signature. The CI must sign this form after reviewing it with the student. Your signature does not necessarily denote agreement with the evaluation. It only indicates that you have received the feedback. This evaluation will be kept confidential and kept in a locked file at Emory in accordance with the Commission for Accreditation for Physical Therapy Education guidelines. We may also use the data from the APTA student evaluation form in the aggregate for Emory DPT accreditation purposes, and it may also be used to assist in developing and mentoring clinical instructors and facilities for our clinical education program. Your evaluation conference is now complete. Your student will take the hard copies of the APTA physical therapy student evaluation form and of the clinical site orientation checklist and will return them to our DPT offices on the Monday after the last day of the clinical experience. This is now the time to wish your student a fond farewell and send them off with a hearty handshake. Well done. Our hope is that you feel empowered and able to complete the online form with confidence and that you have a better understanding of the objectives of our DPT program and of the clinical experience. For additional questions, please contact our Directors of Clinical Education, Dr. Patricia Bridges and Dr. Tammy Phillips at the below contact information. Thank you for taking the time to review this presentation and for your support of Emory's DPT program and students. We are very appreciative of your time and efforts, and we value you as an important member of our clinical education team. 
Until we meet again, take care.